Show Studio. It's our last roundup of the season, and we will be talking about Paris, which is always makes for a giant conversation because obviously there are so, so, so many shows in Paris, and increasingly all different kinds of shows. You've got the kind of edgy, exciting designers that everyone's talking about. You've got the big mega brands. Um, you have the more sort of lady, lady commercial brands. So there's lots of different angles going on in Paris. Um, and also it's part of a kind of wider season of sort of change and movement where people are combining their men's and women's shows or they're changing designers. It just feels like everything's sort of up in the air at the moment. But I do think there were some really interesting things going on this season, um, which we can dive into. But before we do dive in, I will let my fabulous set of panellists introduce themselves. Start with you, Lucy. Hello, my name is Lucy Norris. I'm a writer and historian. Hi, I'm Gianluca Longo, contributing European editor for Dublin Magazine and uh, a fashion observer. You look very tanned. Have you been away? No, I was in Mexico. Oh, okay. yeah. For today, 42 hours. Well, you've picked up a nice glow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tamula Harlick. I am a fashion editor at Pop Magazine. Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm a fashion writer. I'm at another magazine um, and various other titles. But that's it. Thanks, guys. So I'm going to open up to anyone who's feeling confident was there a particular highlight for anyone did anyone see a show that they were particularly enamored or excited by Sophie, did you see anything that you loved you're smiling at me coyly um i thought lucy might <laughs> <laughs> go in then. um yeah well i my last show ended up being new new and i thought that was that was one of my favorites because it was just very happy yeah. And it made me really happy. The music was amazing and the set was amazing. But I kind of, I, for me, it sort of summed up this mash of glamour and sort of sportswear and this mm. kind of slightly rebellious streak that I felt like was a bit hidden in this very luxe way. Um, for me, that kind of summed up what fashion is a bit yeah that's an interesting way of, of looking at it i do think it's also it's interesting you mentioned the kind of the fun thing and the happy thing because i do think it's very difficult times for people to be making collections at the moment and some people have really erred on the side of sort of light relief you know like joy happiness and i think that was definitely the case with with me what did everyone else think of the show did you like it lucy um i think i referred to it as um <laughs> the timeless grotesque <laughs> in a great way, grotesque yeah. in an art term. Um, it was fabulous, but she does play with the grotesque and the project ugly. Back to mm. promoing the project here, but um, no, it, that's that's her heartland in terms of sort of playing away with playing with boundaries of taste. Mm. Um, obviously, kind of like you know we've said, mishmashing this idea of there was there's a very strong connection between. Prada women's wear, Prada men's wear had started off as this sort of, sort of uh, very kind of 1960s, 70s sort of um, political collegiate sort of mm. students. Then, you know, the women to go with that, that pre four were more sort of amped up versions, sparkly and mohair. Yeah. And then she obviously delivered that for Prada and then she absolutely mishmashed this sort of, she, you know, has a connection with Katie Grant working both here and at Mark Jacobs as well. That touch of that again, that sort of slightly psychedelic political kind of mm. um, flavour, but lots of amazing sort of, you know, kind of um, almost like John Galliano does Poire, I think I was mm. talking about as well. This sort of idea of playing around with other references that John was playing with when he was doing that um, at his own house, I think in 2008. But it's it's just um, yeah it's it is it's it is sort of you know props to them for lining the entire venue in this sort of furry purple stuff as well. I know the supplier of that purple fur must have just not known what hit him because it was on all the tickets as well. Can mm -hmm. you imagine? They must have been thrilled. And, and all on our clothes. Everything. Pardon? And on all our clothes got as well. Stuck yeah. Yeah. Left <laughs> oh my gosh, everywhere. really? You still limp roller? Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's unapologetically, like, like you said, it's interesting that this is sort of, what I mean by timeless grotesque is that this will be able to go into an archive. It's an archetypal, mu you know, Mucia collection. Yeah. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's cartoonish and it's OTT Prada or, or Mucia almost. Mm. Mm. But mm. Um, I think that she thinks obviously that in these times, let's, lots of Scaparelli references mm. with the Rhododame 
um, again, sort of, um, yeah, these surrealist references and just, you know, one of the hats looked like a Super Mario, like one up, you know, it was <laughs> such that green and, um, yeah, and it was just, you know, unapologetically Lucia. Very much so, but I think it does speak about what's happening in fashion more broadly, as you implied. Um, I think also partly through that sort of hyper, hyper, sort of maximal, you know, all these colours, all these tones, this kind of sense of bad taste, like bad taste is kind of back at the moment if you think of what's happening um, across fashion. So I think it was kind of very um, appropriate in many ways. Was it a good show? Did you guys like it? Was it one of your favourites? Were there other shows that you're more infused by? Have you seen anything, Tallulah, that's really struck your fancy? Uh, um, I have seen a few things that struck my fancy. I mean, I think that with Miu Miu, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good, solid Miu Miu show. And as it has already been mentioned, it links very perfectly to what's happened with Prada. And to me, it's systematic of Katie Graham loving Prada, yeah. just kind of <laughs> loving Prada beyond belief. And so I wouldn't be surprised that her as the stylist bringing that in and going, how can we make it just as much Prada <laughs> as possible? Yeah. And then make it jolly, yeah. just keep it jolly. Cause that's her thing. She wants it to be jolly with fabulous girls. And that playfulness is completely her thing. I mean, and so I, in, in that realm, I get it. I get it. It's not necessarily up my street, but I understand it for what it is. What mm. is up your street? Was there anything in Paris that you thought, right, this is, this feels... I don't know. I think it was a really odd season. I yeah. think it was, um, on the one hand, it's kind of, I, I'm sort of confused of whether brands are trying to look back at derivative pieces from a ha from their big houses that they've been a part of, or whether they're putting in their completely new stamp and then making a very strong trend-led, this, I keep hearing the word, all the trends are so pervasive right now, and well, I guess, how can a trend, when it comes such a trend, how can it not be? Yeah. And um, in a way, I, I'm sort of, there's this thing of I'm a little bit confused about people who are, making their mark with very strong concepts and ideas and then there are people who are going i found this beautiful thing in the archive and i did this whole collection because of it yeah. and i just i i don't know where anything necessarily re really sits to me with fashion what i love to see is, is, a, is a contemporary response of what is going on globally mm. um and you can be inspired by whatever but th and i don't know I think that has happened, but it's not, it hasn't jumped to mind. It hasn't jumped to mind. No, I think that's interesting. I do think there is this climate at the moment of people kind of retreating back to what they know slightly. And I think it was also, it was married because there was quite a few sort of celebrations of someone being at house or for a certain amount of time or a new designer going in and looking at the archive. So I was thinking like Dries, for example, because obviously he's celebrating like an anniversary show. And that was very much kind of, this sense of retreating into you know comfort and what he has done before and you know obviously the show was really epic because it was all the girls that he's worked with in the past mm. but also lots of silhouettes that he brought back and i loved it there because i felt like it really stood for what he's about mm. and his whole sort of shtick but then at other places this kind of oppressive nostalgia and this obsession with referencing can mm. feel a little because everyone's referencing the same thing. So everyone's mm -hmm. kind of referencing like Margiela and Helmut Lang, mm -hmm. but then also kind of looking a little bit but at Gucci and Batman. But Therese is one of the original Antwerp six, so I really yeah. don't mind what he does. Yeah, you're like, well, so you know, he was referring to himself. He's referring he's to best, himself. He's the best thing ever. He did the best thing ever at his menswear show, which was like a similar thing where um, he brought back a lot of pieces. Uh, that he'd done in the past and he showed at a venue that he'd showed at a couple of times in the 90s. I think I've said this on the panel already, but anyway. Right, okay. And um, back the first look was this very wide-shouldered mm. blazer, oh, camel yeah. coat, and backstage quite a young journalist said... Um, I read your right. Well, they asked about it like yeah. Balenciaga reference. They put it in quite a sort of polite manner. And he just, like, with his typical, you know, calm and serenity, kind of smiled very warmly at them and was like, 
oh yeah, that's actually a coat from 2008 that I did and I just remade it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it was amazing and I thought that was really interesting because it works really well for him. I think it's also, it is a slight sort of flexing of muscle yeah. by referencing yourself because it is saying, you know, I did this, look at my contribution. Like they've just announced today, which I think is amazing, that they're going to be over the next, I can't remember how many days it is, maybe it's like a month, every day they're going to put one of his old shows on their website that you can watch in full. That's cool. A different one each day. And I think it's really amazing. And there is a place for people, I think, looking back. And I think, that's, I think that's what John's doing at Marcello by referencing, like we were saying at the Couture, his yeah. early days and the work of not just himself, but maybe Calm and maybe Yeah, like the Contemporary. It places him in that gang. And it's, it's in terms of fashion food chain, yeah. it's them saying, this is where this is how far up the food chain we are yeah defining and yeah, defining a bit from. of a sort of hierarchy maybe in terms of but i think stage. it's also from a commercial perspective it makes sense because it's 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 adding to your brand story like yeah. there's such value in like heritage and you know objects from your past that's why everyone's buying their archives like crazy and what have you what was your take okay, on the talking scene? about talking about john galliano i think uh, the Margiela show was one of the most interesting of yeah, all right. seasons. Yeah. I mean, you, you never hear about it anymore because of, you know, the, the ethos of Margiela, you know, there's not much coverage or whatever. But I, I found, the, you know, I remember going to John Galliano's shows when he used to do all around the world um, silhouettes, you know, there was, you yeah. know, the uh, uh, references to the Americana, to the Peruvian, to the Italian, to the French. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's done exactly that. And he did in such a lovely way, in a more commercial way that he would have done for a John Galliano line. Mm -hmm. But I think it was an interesting, interesting mm -hmm. collection that I really Amazing. enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, together also with, the, you know, going back to what Talula was saying, there were some also uh, shows that were, they felt a bit confusing, a confused. Um, sometimes, you know, there were two particular shows where um, the sets were almost made on purpose in order to confuse you, mm, not to concentrate on the clothes because oh. the clothes yeah. were even yeah. more confusing. Yeah. And, uh, and like I found that was actually another, another element of Paris, especially, yeah. you know, um, what we saw at Celine and uh, Vuitton. It was just very confusing what to see and what to do because you were so overwhelmed by, you know, the, the moving uh, sets where you were sitting or the Louvre. And of course, you know, you cannot but to look at the, the statues and all the surroundings mm. that sometimes you got a bit confused by the clothes. Do you think people are feeling confused? Mm -hmm. Do you think designers are feeling sort of confused and concerned? Well, I don't know if it's designers or if it's uh, the brands, you know, the, the, the CEOs, the CFOs and the CMOs mm. and all the, you know, all in that hierarchy. Yeah. If they say, oh, we want a bigger and better and much, uh, uh, much exposure on Instagram and mm -hmm. social media that, you know, why not the Louvre? I mean, what's next? I mean, maybe yeah. the Tour Eiffel. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's quite an interesting thing. So you never know. You, you hardly hear anymore from the designer sometimes. You know, I, it's uh, interesting because with the um, Jill Sander, um, you know, we got announced today. Day. Day. And I loved, I loved the way that the communications team phrased it. Our collaboration with has it. I'm like, it's not collaboration. He's the designer. Oh, no, but it's always phrased like that. They're Is like, it? Yeah, yeah not, they that. always make it. They're always like, we have mutually decided to end our no, no, collaboration. No, no, no. I, 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 the mutual, but that I'm collaboration. I'm going to that when I break up with someone. I'm going to be like, I've mutually decided yes. to end my collaboration. But that word collaboration is something that I've spotted before. And it's just sort of, again, this, like you said, I think that at Louis Vuitton, Nicholas is getting muted in terms of his creative genius, mm. but yet the venue is getting amped up and it's all becoming more like the press release, the, the show notes, he's nowhere near them, you know, it's very, mm. very corporate. I feel like the, the venue was used as a way of emphasising the French aspect of Louis Vuitton. I think it was very much about being like, you know, we are the French house. It's like two epic symbols of Paris. Oh yeah, no, you I mean, know, of I think course, that was of course it is. But I think that he's building a wardrobe and, um, you know, and has got sort of very big commercial asks. Um, but I'm not sure that when we look back on in this period of him, in terms of fashion history, that this will be like, I don't know. I, mean, I think the tough thing though is when he was designing at Balenciaga, it was such different times for totally fashion. Different brief, so you could I just get do that. Well, even not just a different brief, but like everything was different. Like the people going to the shows were different. The way the shows were covered was different. Like I wonder if he was doing what but he was doing at Balenciaga now, if people would find it as exciting. But also the reach of Balenciaga was much smaller and much totally. more niche. I mean, you know, Louis Vuitton has to appeal to so many markets, to so many people, to so many clients. Apart from talking, you know, just talking about fashion, can you imagine yeah. for, for the accessories? But I think, I think though that I would disagree. His pieces that he did at Balenciaga were phenomenal, and I think that if somebody was producing fashion like that now, 
think there was great storytelling and, and great, um, I, I don't know, I think that there is great, I, I understand that he's not the most known of designers out, you know, he's not Mark Jacobs, you know, he's not mm -hmm. a house, near household name. And um, he does have a particular sort of aesthetic that perhaps a Louis Vuitton customer that just goes to the store on Bond Street that she or he, or she rather, you know, Mark Jacobs, I think, had more of a sort of um, the showmanship, and mm. he was near household name. I think it was, and he made clothes that, um, yeah, that were more accessible in a way of they were more jolly. I um, guess I just mean like the kind of intense, futuristic approach that Nicolas Casquier always has. It's like very mm. much in his sensibility, but was really sort of explored at Balenciaga. I wonder. I mean, I think those clothes are amazing. I'm obsessed with those collections, but I do think fashion today and I think you really saw that this fashion week and with the kind of the return of all the logos this obsession with mm. sort of text or these kind mm. of power graphics on clothes mm. and as John Luca was saying the set like everything is about instant appeal now mm. and I think to do a collection to do collections that were so forward thinking that often you know they mm. they, they made sense sometimes like two years later like you'd still see those ideas yeah, being course. like eight yeah, later yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if they would have this I think he's it's just different times, isn't I mean, it? I yeah, think totally. And I think I think there was, a, for me, just even seeing the way that, you know, that sort of denim comes sort of wool jacket, and seeing the way that was cut, mm. that for me was quite an emotional moment because I could see him and I could see yeah. great mm. trousers. I'm not saying it wasn't a great show, but like I do, I do feel there could be a way for them to possibly allow for, for him to. I don't know. I mean. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a really take tough off phrase, a little bit um, and have a bit of a more of a more of an angle in terms of the collection because there wasn't really any. It, I think I don't know. Celine and Breton had that in common in a way: the shared massive sets, but also this really kind of subtle, beautiful, wearable stuff. It almost felt a bit normcore, a bit stripped yeah. Yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. In a way, yeah, you've got the set that sort of maybe that's there to cover up for that aspect. Exactly, Actually, I mean, that, what that's what I'm saying. You know, it was confusing and confused, so yeah. you never know which one was. The but it lended, it, so it, it lended a great, it lended a great balance. So I don't think you could have been at the Louvre and done something really showy. Yeah. Mm. I think in a way it was very cool to have done what they did mm. because you know we're there last night of the week and you know it's in the evening. You're in the Louvre. Mm. It's all very exciting, and then some clothes just come out, yeah. and it's kind of quite. Yeah. Um, irreverent to yeah. just bring out some clothes, isn't it? Yeah. So in a way, I think in terms of the tone, you couldn't have brought out all this glitzy, it would have been no, too brash and yeah. not in with the time. So I think in a way it was done really, really well. And maybe mm. I'm still, you know, just as we adjust our eye to clothing when it's new, maybe just adjusting your eye to the balance of a, the mm. whole package. I think it's also, you know, for something like Celine, I think, you know, because there's so much talk of sort of maximal, maximal, maximal. And you know, she was obviously the queen of that stealth wealth thing. Mm. To really, really sort of stake your claim for minimalism and as you say, this kind of normal and this kind of like hyper banal thing, mm. I thought was a statement in itself. You know, she has done collections that are much more kind of showy mm. and eccentric. You know, Celine Ofton is quite eccentric. Whereas this I thought was really about sort of normality in a very interesting way but I here it felt slightly more conceptual to me at Viton it felt like a wardrobe it felt like a proposition for a wardrobe whereas this felt it, this felt like a fashion proposition mm -hmm. what else was good was there anything you loved John Luca? Um, you know what I think this season I was very much into the um, I, I loved a lot of the arty designers um, I mm -hmm. fell in love I was totally in love with the uh, um, undercover oh show. my god undercover is like show of the um, season <laughs> like I the day that undercover. show happened like Instagram everyone was like yes oh god, but actually undercover. you know what it's actually the show that I least Instagrammed because I was just because you were having a good time yes yeah. yeah. um, yeah. yeah. and yeah. then of course you know Conde Garçon was just uh, so yeah. touching mm. and so magical um, yeah. why three why yeah. three? Why project? Why project? project? I love so why project. Yeah. Yeah. I must say, and you know, it was the first night for me. You know, so after good. coming straight from um, Saint Laurent into yeah. why project, yeah. um, and uh, um, so yes, I think those those are the one that really um, gave me something, gave me an emotion, gave me gave me I something agree. to dream, to dream about, something to think about. Um, I think it's because they don't have to justify themselves. You know, there's so much justifying going on in fashion. I think that's why everyone's 
being so political and making all these kind of like earnest statements is because they're really aware about how brash it is in a way to be creating really expensive clothes yeah. and doing these huge, like very wasteful shows in the times that we're in. Whereas these kind of designers have always stood outside of that sort of big commercial aspect of fashion. So they can do what they do without you know, always, always having to apologize. They always get blamed that I always uh, support the, the younger, the, the small designers. But yes, because yeah. you know, those are the ones who can really, uh, can still provide their own ideas and succeed in it. You know, they mm. don't have to, to uh, take too many, too many uh, spreadsheets in yeah. accounts and you yeah. know, they do what they like. And um, and that's what I f that's what I, I really enjoyed. I must say. So I did think this show was amazing. It was a beautiful show. Yeah. You, you know, taking away the, the last part with all the the big gowns and you know the the, the theatrical side of it. There are actually some beautiful. It was the best show. Yeah. It was the best show yeah. of the week. Yeah. But it's also just like pure fashion theatre, rather than that version of fashion theatre that we were all talking about, where it's like let's bedazzle them with a big moving set, or yeah. you know, like a big. There were so many, like you said, wearable pieces. These great long skirts, these little sweaters, and it was just the jacket. I mean, the it was jacket. It was just the, these sort of gilets, and, yeah. and it was just the you know people cried. I mean, mm. it was very the combination of sort of dance and the music and the, and the, and the clothes, but it was. Yeah, and I totally agree with Gianluca. I think that the Japanese designers across the board just totally pulled it out of the bag. I'm just also really fascinated with um, Jin Takashi's references as well, because you know that he's so obsessed with designers like Vivian Westwood and what have you. Mm. And you look at each collection, you really wonder what he was looking at, mm. which is really exciting. Mm. Um, I think also the com thing that you said is interesting, because obviously the com exhibition is going to shortly open at the Met. Mm. And, and I think. Do you think that will put a focus back on sort of com and those Japanese designers and that wave of design? I think, you know, there is, of course, you know, there's been so much talk about, uh, you know, the, the big exhibition is this, the, the second um, living designer to be um, celebrated mm. at, the, at the Costume Institute. And I think it's uh, this show and the show before, the from last season, do you remember it was all the oversized the square uh, yeah. boxes. Mm -hmm. um, I think Ray in these two last shows just went for it. Absolutely yeah. like the most unwearable of the unwearable. Mm. But you know, with a beautiful message, I mean, it's, uh, it's almost like a, a message against the, the, the tits that we saw at uh, Ida Ackerman of what's her name, Nicki Minaj with, uh, with uh, wearing just a little metallic. Oh, Heide Ackerman, so you've done a whole fashion show and then it gets eclipsed it, by a nipple yes. tassel. Yes, like and you know, and then <laughs> it, it, it's been fun. I mean, even I was so entertained by the Instagram the cutouts and the collage yeah. of it put together, you mm. know, the elongated nipple or whatever. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's almost like, you know, you go from, from that one in the morning and then in the afternoon you see almost the female body completely turned and actually yeah. um, laughing at it by Comte de Garçon. And, you know, for, of course, you know, uh, um, I prefer to see that one than Nicki Minaj was actually, actually sitting in front of me. But, of <laughs> course, either actor show actually was a fantastic one too. I mean, I found it incredibly yeah. sleek, beautiful silhouette, the jacket with the shoulders, you know, the pants, and those kind of cent centurion, how do you call it, centurion uh, look when the girls um, came out with the, with the marabou, uh, with the, um, oh yes, centurion, uh, yeah, it was, marabou it was pants. quite balletic as well. Can, can you say centurion? No, it's yeah, like it more was like a, a nymph, a you know, like fawn a, or a, a something. Yeah, a fawn. Fawn. Exactly, okay. a creature of the yeah. of the of the woods. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's I very balletic in that sense. Incredibly elegant, well. incredibly yeah. sleek. Yeah. No, I did think it was, and also what's nice for a show like this, that, and the fact that it was so beautiful and people took the time to sort of write about it and praise it, is because it's like, these kind of clothes, you know, they're not like instantly Instagrammable. It's not that kind of shouty fashion. I thought it was really, really, really beautiful. And I think, you know, Heide Ackerman is, is one of those designers who's really, and obviously now that he's working for another house as well, it's like splitting his time back on his own label and that hasn't seemed to sort of undermine it at all. Did you guys like Com and all of those? Mm. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like I feel like it feels like art. It feels it felt like a nice way to set up that the exhibition more yeah. than ever. And I love the idea of people wearing these clothes to the exhibition, and trying to navigate their <laughs> way around the next. Miley Cyrus. <laughs> no, but do you know that I can't wait to see. That'll that. be amazing. I cannot wait to see what because we've never had this before. It's such a conceptual designer. Such a conceptual designer. And you know, it's usually it's been you know punks made. You know, Avril Lavigne turns up with like silver, or Anne Hathaway turns up with silver nail polish, and you're like, whoa, what's <laughs> everyone going to do for Com? That's exactly. amazing. But then the <laughs> thing is, is that they all get taken by each design house, so yeah, you so have, to have to stand next to Donatella in a Donatella Versace dress. That will have speak nothing to calm because it I'm physically like, what, can't. What's the theme? You know, like Manisex machine. Like, 
Is, is there just going to be no theme? I, just, I cannot wait for people... I don't know, yeah, it's no, going be interesting. Of, yeah, a celebration of a designer. So yes. Yeah. Uh, well, what's, ex- what's the actual exhibition title? It's called... Can um, someone go- it's like in between something... In between, the, 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 yes. The in, God, can someone just Google what the... Has anyone got a laptop? Gee, can you just Google what... Oh, perfect, thanks. Um, so maybe people will go with, the, with that. With that, as I see. With this, I felt like I was like in the womb, in outer space. It was like all the girls were sort of <laughs> looking at each other and acting in these really weird sort of jittery, of the like they were kind of... Sorry, what is it? It's called Art of the In-Between. Yeah, Art of the In-Between. So maybe you'll exactly. get a lot of like broken dresses. Mm-hmm. And people will take that in their own way. <laughs> like, I lo- you know, like, well, Man of Sex Machine, everyone just dressed like sort of 70s Robot. robots. Yeah. It was so weird. But yeah. And these were all like industrial fabrics as well. So yeah. um, just, uh, again, again, it was, it went beyond fashion and she didn't really, apart from the leather, use any fashion mm. fabrics. It was mm. all sort of loft insulation and mm. stuff. And also you think like everyone's obviously looking back at her archive and obviously you look at something like this and you think of like lumps and bumps and you think of those really yes. pivotal collections. Well, this was a 20 year anniversary of lumps yeah. and bumps. And I think it's, um, you know, Sophie, you mentioned, you know, with the exhibition coming up, you know, I would have, sus- I wouldn't have blamed, you know, Ray for taking her foot off the pedal and saying, Okay, I've got an exhibition that we're doing, guys. Yeah, so I just like, really. but actually, she went for it for it full throttle and used it as an opportunity to remind us all of the Miss Cunningham performance. Yes, these girls went dancing, but they were definitely performing, and being yeah. there was quite an experience. I just and the how they and got bumps. them into the clothes. Like, does that zip up at the there back? There is a zip. Yeah, I was, was there? looking. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, um, they were all beautifully cut. I mean, the, the for example, the big ones in felt. They had a zip that goes all around from um, the oh back really? to the way to the way down. I'm not sure about the paper one. Because I kind of um, imagine these poor girls yes. being like built into those clothes um, and then having to. I mean, they could walk in it. I mean, of course, you can move your your arms, but. But all this interaction the, and everything. The interaction was, was magical. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. amazing. It was really wonderful. It was very very beautiful. Who else? There are lots of people that we haven't talked about. Um, Balenciaga. Um, Should we talk about Balenciaga? Absolutely, you're smiling. But the thing is, okay, well, at least with Balenciaga, I feel kind of like happy that they are. So that, that the thing of this sort of shoulder like this, they said, was derivative of something of old pictures from the archive that had been found of a fitting or fittings and models holding a piece of cloth just there. Mm. And I think they've maybe found two or three pictures and then took it to develop. And it marries so much with that, their it, aesthetic. Of exactly, like their shoulders that were already <laughs> happening and that apparently everybody was wearing in Paris. And I don't know, as I wasn't there, if they were. <laughs> but I kind of, the thing is, is that I'm kind of, I suppose, I love it when a brand, and I think Jonathan does this at Loewe as well, is when I completely feel um, completely taken in its entirety of the soul and the takeover and the meaning and they are really in their own way they are doing that Mm. and i value hugely which is why i always value phoebe fido at at celine you know the stores are exactly in the spirit in the soul of what she means Mm. the music by michelle guber is exactly what is the correct meaning like everything is so seamless within a sense and an essence and a feeling and to me that's really important and that's what makes me take note of designers of brands you know I, I don't feel that so much as wonderful as you know Dior is I, I don't feel it I'm not kind of like with it I don't think mm. if I walked into a store I would get it get that mm. feel everything about it every kind of sense of has to be taken over and they're doing this at Balenciaga right now mm. Mm. Well, I think like Jonathan, they're curators and yeah. they're curating this whole experience. You know, like with Jonathan, with you know, obviously, um, you know, art and the books that you get at the show and everything yeah. is the handkerchief that you get with the, you know, you can't take it with you through the line. He's everywhere, like yeah. sort of, you're in his world, yeah. even yeah. You know, from arriving. I don't really think it's about being in a world. It's like you're invited to enjoy his taste level. Okay, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like that idea yeah. of like. And browse this book that I like and look at this yeah. picture that I like. And it's very much about, oh, yeah, it's him, which yeah. I think they're good at doing as well, mm-hmm. like that sense of, but I think this collection was like a step. There's a lot of stuff that's very, very signature to them. But I think there was a slight, I found the very, the more formal pieces super interesting mm-hmm. and kind of 
nice that engagement with the Balenciaga archive I think was interesting I think, that, I think that was the, 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 the last looks were the winners yeah and I found in total I mean some of the best looks the whole season the last big bu uh, balloon <laughs> when you say big bird big, not big bird but you know like the polka dot one and then yeah. the, the one with the feathers and the, the, the big striped ones that are actually original um, shapes yeah. of, yeah. Uh, of uh, Balenciaga but you know just yeah. add a bit of pockets maybe you know straps on the dress and then, then, then there it goes yeah. um, you know they're also celebrating you know this big exhibition at mm -hmm. uh, you know there will be a big exhibition here at the V&A yeah. in May opening uh, on Balenciaga and there is and an exhibition Paris, at yeah. the Museum of Dan in Paris yeah. about all the black uh, the black bits so it feels like it's celeb they're celebrating Balenciaga that yeah. needed to be you know it's the 100th anniversary so um, a bit like what uh, Common's doing in a way yeah. Yeah. taking well, yes. advantage of the exhibitions that's a good point yeah, yeah. and uh, and you know it, it worked yeah, I mean the last uh, I absolutely love I mean I, I've always had a little um, love for campness and yeah. the big gown so <laughs> you know when I saw the last five outfits I was I was just really I quite enjoy. like these sort of, I'm going to use the word grotesque again in the nicest <laughs> way possible, because it, you know, it's these sort of wonky grotesque takes on Cristobal, which yeah. are very now and very cool. I do think the first section though with this rap went on way too long. I don't think if, you know, if you were Prada, you could have got away with doing that for two or three looks, yeah. if you were Marc Jacobs, an entire section of pretty much the same idea. But that is kind of the Dominic of Asalia way, isn't but it? It's like hammering and hammering home the yeah, same yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, no, for me though, I just, yeah. for me, oh, oh, I, yeah, for me, it didn't, I know there was this reference to the archive, but it was very them, and for me, it just looked like, yeah, great, coats pulled over. What I, found, what I find times. interesting from the show were the little pochette, you know, the little handbags with the number of the passage, you know, with the, the number of the look when the model in the past, yeah, again, nice. refer referencing yeah, to, yeah. to the old um, catwalk, the yeah. old salon walks, mm -hmm. you know, they had, you know, a little number for the, um, for the softy. I don't know why I'm speaking French with them, but yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that, that I, I find it incredibly um, interesting and, you know, yeah. super. But they're uh, definitely building something here without a mm -hmm. doubt of great yeah. strength, you know, um, like, you know, like Tulu was saying, it, it's just, yeah, it, it was commercially clever. Like, there's an interview. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's. In, there's an interview with Lotta um, on Show Studio in the in Conversation Project. I think she talks about that in there. I might have read it somewhere else. I actually can't remember. Um, but she talks about the. I think they enjoy also the commercial. So you know, there's a lot of bags in the show. There's a lot of product in this show, and she talks about like that process of when you know the powers that be at Balenciaga will be like guys we need an espadrille like it sells really well for us and then they'll be like right how can we make an espadrille that's like us so they'll make it like really wonky or like do and I think they kind of enjoy that process of knowing that they have to make certain things yeah, and it's, and very, in, it's it. very in your face like you said these big massive sort of almost like naughty size horrendous bags basically you know they're all broke out arms and backs in yeah. 2004 they're like that was the chloe paddington yeah, exactly everyone got repetitive strain yes, they from did. carrying it in the nook of it they did because that padlock was yes, so heavy it so gen genuinely happened there's probably and people still suffering and, mul and mulberry they went for it of course mm. you know bigger that let's just make you know bigger bags be the trend and it's you it makes you look thinner bigger bags and bigger sunglasses well, they're, they're all more expensive as well so you go into the yeah. store and everything is just like alice in wonderland proportions and um but they like you said almost love sort of like the kind of um yeah the, the kind of sort of almost kind of having fun with that commercial yeah kind of well that's the whole hitting thing it straight on more, you know that's what the label yes, they found absolutely. It. it's like buy a load of clothes like absolutely the, the side button coat is quite an extension it's a bit like the hammering on of it is yeah. their kind of their joke yeah it's part of that sense of humor okay. isn't it because really next season loads of people will be wearing them no, and they will them. look slightly hilarious but they'll also make total sense but it is i feel like that's part of it's extending out that joke yeah. too long and, and also the ownership of that idea because going back to the dress example that I gave it is telling that people immediately said oh that's a Balenciaga mm. jacket you know it's like it's very when funny. you own an idea even it's definitely, an, it's definitely it. an it item you know I was talking about this with Nick earlier on you know people saying there aren't trends anymore I'm like well what's a hoodie you know it's yeah. an it item mm. just like Chloe Paddington used to be an it an item, it item yeah. so really like they're just very much this is the, the coat that Yes, we know we're showing it those times, but yeah, it's definitely going to be an it item. Yeah, so. no, and it'll filter down as well, which would be interesting to watch. High Street trying to attempt that with <laughs> varying degrees of success. I'd love to see a nice street get a version of that uh, coat. I know, it'd be brilliant. That would be really brilliant. <laughs> um, I'd love to see how it fits. 
Who else should we discuss? Should we talk about Sanna Rung? What did everyone think of Sanna Rung? Because it's like, it had super mixed reviews. Why was it so long? Why it was, was yeah. 106. Oh, it was wow. so long. We were in the rain as well. Why was it so long? They had like a separate section at the end where they all suddenly thought it was over and then all these Diamante monks arrived. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I, you know, I, 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 I found it really interesting. <laughs> um, in a way, um, it's a loaded word. <laughs> no, exactly. Because I don't know. I, I mean, it's, 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 you know, I think he's, he's doing a, a good job, Antonio Macarello, in uh, keep. I want to say good job in keeping the um, the, uh, the new ethos of San Ran given by yeah. um, um, Edith Sliman. There were a, lot, a bit of touches of also Balmain by Christopher de Carnan. Oh, totally. Yeah, um, yeah. You know the boots and everything. I mean, it's actually I really enjoyed watching the show because it was so calm. Yeah. Okay, for a gay man, it's just like heaven because you know the music, the hair, the wind, the rain, <laughs> the rain, the, 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 the yeah. diamante everywhere. I loved it um, as an observer. Um, I'm sure it would be incredibly commercial because you know those boots are gonna fly off the shelves mm. like crazy. Um, it's an experiment. It's going well. You know why? Why breaking it? Yeah. You know, so it must be very weird being a designer at a house that has such like fashion legacy and such kudos and know that you're basically being expected to ape the work of the designer that was there before you. You know, like, that must be a weird brief. Like, it must be a designer's dream to be, like, creative director of Saint Laurent, but knowing that you've been made creative director so you can kind of, not copy, but, like, follow closely yeah, but then, the work of the But then the what's the one? risk? You know, you, you, yeah. get, you arrive in a, new, in a new house, you know, you want to be with your own ideas. You try two seasons and then they suck you. Yeah, so at that point true. it's better, it's better if I, you yeah. stick with that, unless you go to, you know, to do gardening after, you know. Yeah. But, if you, but I don't yeah. think he would have got the job had he not had the aesthetic that No, of course, Eddie he would had. never have got the job if Eddie Simone hadn't been there. No, oh, exactly. Absolutely. So yeah. because of his similar taste or aesthetic, that then placed him perfectly. Yeah. Um, imagine what other designer they could have got had they not followed that strategy. But no, he was exactly, perfect yeah. in that way. In that way. What did everyone else think? Are we fans? You're, you're kind of grimacing at the screen slightly. What's your take? No, I think it's very sexy. I liked, I liked the kind of combination of, obviously there's the furor about them being a bit over sexy during yeah. Fashion Week. <coughs> well, campaigns. there's been all that stuff about the campaigns, you know, they being pulled. So it oh, yes. incited, what it re like looked. But I felt like there was an interesting play on that which was deemed really derogatory and really offensive by lots of people um, but there's there's a kind of armory like a kind of there's a, a an army in this show and there's mm. a very there's definitely a kind of fierce aggressiveness that comes with it and those kind of huge gauntlet gloves mm. that come over the shoulders I feel like that was a nice way of offsetting that uber sexiness that can be a bit but you know, there is a direct there is a one message there that is great so you know there is mm. no confusion what's whatsoever in that show in the in every single piece from the mm. jumper to the to the to, mm. min, to the mini dress with the boots uh, there is one woman mm -hmm. that is that one and you know you, you can't get it wrong and i think that is commercial but that is quite different to how eddie Simon did it i know a lot of the shows like the styling felt very similar like they all had a tiara on or like they all had a fedora or mm. whatever it was but there was a, it was it felt very much like a garment driven collection, yes. whereas this feels much more like you know, like an idea of a woman. I I I, I kind of hear what you're saying with the aggressive kind of element to it, but I just I question how um, I don't think this is really a considered um, empathetic empowered view of a woman. I'm I don't not think sure. he's I'm sitting not around sure thinking either, about that. But I but I feel like there's a there's a play somewhere between there is. Yeah. the two yeah. that is interesting. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting, they do seem to be with, you know, <coughs> Roberta Cavalli somewhat at sea at the moment and Bauman's army in full flow. Um, it did feel like they were kind of going for that. It was a bit Christophe de Carnan at yeah, Bauman, yeah, actually. Like, yeah. It felt a bit disco in places with this blue mm. and quite fun. Mm. Um, but yes, I mean, this, the, the, the section at the end was very severe in a way, but lots of sculptural elements. And it was kind of quite interesting because it was just all very, very, lots of it was so sculptural. It did seem to have sort mm. of like a signature. Um, I think, yeah, I think this woman exists. I, I don't know whether it's the 
Saint Laurent woman though. I think mm. they're possibly moving into a more bowman, sexy, party girl kind of. I'm not yeah. saying that that wasn't ever Saint. I don't know. It's, but when it's less grungy and more just. You think of the just Saint Laurent woman as yeah, like you think smoking jacket. You think uh, like elements of androgyny, and I think this is so hyper young, mm. hyper like revealed. You know, like the campaigns are so much about flesh bearing, which is very much what his, he is about. What he is about. Knew, yeah. It just lacks that. I think with them, um, there was such irreverence and intelligence and insolence to what, to like original Yves Saint Laurent. Of course. And this just lacks that, I, it just doesn't feel clever to me. I question the yeah, intelligence is, of the people he, who are making but it. But he like, isn't probably the pedigree of designer that the house does. But then I'm like, get, so a, he's gonna get do a really amazing intellectual stylist. Don't just get someone who makes girls look hot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just think that's, I just think there's, there's and also, I think it's also from like a really, sorry, I'm going to proper rant now. Yeah. But I, also their archives are so amazing. There's yeah. just so much to play with in that history of that house. Well, it was. I just think do better, you know, like. I think last season was interesting because it became more, there's much more, you could see historicism and theatricality and mm. references going back to even sort of, you know, medieval dress and all mm. kinds of things. And I don't know, I think it's just a massive ask for, you know, like you said, the most amazing archive, probably yeah. the most important archive in fashion history. Yeah. <laughs> but then if you think, you know, it, this brand should be so on the money for what's going on at the times. Like original Usana was about like, if you think like youth, um, this kind of urgency, um, it was political, it was Seven controversial. Yeah. Multiracial. This is, not, this is not controversial at all. The most controversial thing it's done is like bear a woman's breast and that's not really controversial, that's just like, mm -hmm playing for attention. But that's maybe what you see is in controversial, you know, you have to, to, to understand also what, what the designer, you know, his background and, you know, mm. his, uh, his depth or whatever, or maybe just what he gets asked to do. Yeah. No, that's he did that last yeah. season and, you know, as there well. Was the, there, there was everything in that collection. There mm. was not a piece missing, mini no. skirt, long skirt, a, a tight yeah. skirt, a jacket, a oversized, a smaller. I mean, everything you want as a, sh a proper shop owner, it's all there. It's so all it's there, yeah. it's a and the, there was a little commercial. sort of vague like Norm core section which actually I quite liked and I think the aviator jackets the beginning were quite cool actually I mean mm. I'm not saying I'd wear them oh, but they were like that fine, amazing but, but there were some incredible kind of fun pieces but I don't know um yeah like that girl on the right doesn't even look like she wants to be wearing that she's like help me <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see you wearing that with those boots <laughs> really <laughs> yes <laughs> Next time we go to Paris. Next, next time we can go out. Next what trip did you on the think? Eurostar. Uh, next trip on the Eurostar for sure. What did you think, Tallulah? You're staying quiet. It's hard because I think Anthony Laffaro is a really nice guy. I'm sure he is. And I know that he just lo he loves Anya Rubik. And she is a hot babe with like endlessly long legs and looks flawless in whatever. Mm. And... I sort of can see where maybe he's been hanging out or what he's been up to. And, but the thing is, is that it doesn't, I think you're quite right. I think that potentially working with a different stylist who showed a different type of viewpoint and a different element of a woman mm. would encourage him and inspire him differently than, I, he's worked with the same team for some time um, and his incredible, lovely casting director, Pierre Giorgio, and mm. like it's the same team that delivers the, the sex in black. Yeah, and, and like girls slightly falling out of her garment, but yeah. looking great, and it's... And I think, uh, th to me now, this is dated. Like this is, uh, if a chick ro rolls up somewhere, like it's dated, it's passe. Well, that's what I mean. You wouldn't look like, you know that um, iconic image of the woman in the smoking suit? You just think you would look at her and feel so sort of both intrigued and intimidated. Whereas mm. if I, if some, as you say, if some girl rolled up in that, you wouldn't be like, "Ooh, wonder who she is." You'd mm. be like, "Yes." Yeah. And it's very dated. You know, seven years ago, you know, Vaccarello's thing where he came onto the market, and you know, very much supporting this amazing sort of yeah supermodel or off duty, but looking really. Do you know what I mean? It's, but it's also so just so <laughs> thin. Like, you know, it's, like you ha it's all like hip bones and thigh gap and shoulder blade. It's just like... Oh, yeah, but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a one woman message. And yeah. You know, it's there. So in, in a way, like it or not, it's, it's 
instead. Yeah. So you know, but that's no, I'm like, there's actually, no confusing message. And also, give me Bauman else. any day of that because at least Bauman is lots of different types of girls, and yeah. it's like oh, that, I think that show is so awful. <laughs> you hate it, but I I I have a place in my heart for Bauman <laughs> oh because God. I think he, like firstly Olivia Wisting has done more for like championing different types of beauty than probably any other designer. Yeah. They're all really beautiful. Yeah, they're all really beautiful. Like, they're all different races. They're different body shapes. Like that is like a thin white woman. Like, sure. Do you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. this is like, and also he, I like, he does put on his runway things that are going to appeal to women who don't feel completely comfortable I, bearing their bodies. I, I mean, it's not my style. Where? Let's find a look. Come on. I, but I'm like, like, he does a lot of like fully completely covered. Like more than you realise when you're actually at that show, he does a lot of these completely head to toe. Yeah, but that's still got this sort of like she's at home, ready to take her clothes off type kind of thing. No, I think it's for a woman in the Middle East who loves Bauman but can't wear a mini dress. And she'll be really excited that her look's on the runway as well. Yeah, no, but if you think about the way that Kim dresses, she does all that flowy, flowy stuff, but it's still highly sexualised. Mm. So it's sort of... <laughs> I'm like, so I'm, I'm looking and I cannot... It's no, but like that, like I can't, I can't see the look numbers. But like, there we go, full, full covered dress, and that's pretty drapey. Yeah, it's like, much less like there's a lot less flesh there than. It there was is very, it was very right, difficult. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. It was very difficult to penetrate as a collection. I was looking, I was thinking, right, you know, you've got Cavalli, Critzi, all these references. But it's, it's, it's very heavy. And actually, mm. weirdly enough, when there was flesh exposed in the final section, and it was a bit more, much more stripped back. I felt like I could breathe because I just mm. felt like I had all this sort of haberdashery mm. coming and beading coming in. It's, the clothes wear the girls, and if you're Kim, mm. that's part of this look, you know. Just mm. you know, but it's it's yeah. I I think one thing that there is, is heart here. There's not, but also it's not. I think it's a very different brief, and it's a very different thing. Like. W w there's an interview with him on Shea Studio with Olivia mm -hmm. Wisting, and he talks a lot about how he associates his ideas with actually original Bauman, which is this idea of this jet setting lifestyle. And he's like, I'm just catering to the new mm -hmm. jet setting lifestyle. And I'm like, fine, give me this kind of sexy, sexy, lifestyle y type thing. And it's, but it, that's a very different kind of house and heritage to Saint Laurent, which is all about things that are much more intelligent and political. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't pretend to be this avant, like this kind of interesting, <laughs> urgent, cool designer. Whereas Not the whole thing around Saint Laurent is like that they're like the fucking shit, and you're like, but you're making that. Whereas he's just having a lovely time. Yeah, no, I, and, I'm, <laughs> and I agree with you. I mean, I think his spirit and I, you know, it, it's much more. It's. I just think it's honest. It's honest. It's believable. Yeah. I think that it's weirdly enough though. I do think that Saint Laurent are trying to get in on this. A little bit. Yeah, but they're trying to get on it while trying to pretend that they're really edgy and cool. Whereas at least he's just like having exactly. a lovely time. Exactly. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, aesthetically, it's not for me, but I do. I admire the honesty to it. It was just so loaded, Lou. Like when you when you saw it in the. I mean, like girls, oh, no, yeah. girls looking loaded, being yeah. loaded with. We've seen this before, and we've said it before a thousand times. Um, yeah. At the um, men's show, he played The Show Must Go On as the soundtrack, and it was like, it was really amazing, actually. Yeah. It was a really lovely time. <laughs> Are you a Bauman fan, Gianluca? Um, I'm not, particularly, but uh, um, I have to say, maybe I was not so convinced when I was at the show. Now, looking back at the picture, so in By the Mansion, it's actually, it actually makes sense. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a coherent collection. I yeah. mean, like it or not, I'm, I'm just looking back no, and, you know, you know yeah. it's it is coherent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, is co you know, it, it works. And, yeah. you know, there are pieces that, you know, you know, that like the, the guy actually were sitting next to each other. We're always sitting yes, next to each other, Bauman. Bauman. Yeah, they do the and, same seating um, plan. Um, <laughs> and uh, it makes sense. It's, it's not a bad, I have to say, he is uh, honest. Mm. He knows what he's doing and, you know, he knows he's been working very hard to create mm. his little niche yeah. from, I remember, from when he first started. So Nobody successful. believed in him when he first started. Yeah. Nobody yeah. did believe yeah. him. No. And he's been working very hard for, you know, resuscitating the mm. House of Balmain by Instagram, by social media, mm. you know, the, having Kin and Kanye in the campaign. Mm. I mean, it, it's, 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 and it all comes from him. Yeah. He's one it's of the only really designers really at, at Paris Fashion Week, I think, uh, outside of the kind of amazing conceptual designers who, who 
uh, deliberately work in this way, but out of the sort of more big brands who are trying to sell clothes, I think he's the only one that doesn't work with an idea of a woman. It's a real woman. Like you, it, those girls exist. Whereas and he loves them. Saint Laurent, he, all those other ones. It's this idea yes. of a girl. And you know what? He, he loves the, he loves this idea. Of these women, you know, he spends a lot of time with the Kanye, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, with the with the Kim mm -hmm. and the, the sisters and everything else. And you know, for a designer, that's what I always say every, all the time. I come here to these panels for a designer. Sometimes it's so important to have a woman, ugly or but we like it, we like, we might like mm. her or not, but to have someone next to him mm. that uh, has to wear these clothes and yeah. literally if she can sit down and say, am I going to make a, a dress that where a girl can put it on and then can sit or move? Yeah. I mean, sometimes designers forget about it. Yeah. That is the yeah. basic essence of fashion, making clothes for women to wear to go out yeah. and feel sexy or, or dreary or uh, conceptual or whatever, but they have to wear them. Mm. So don't struggle too much. And uh, as I think Oliver is really doing it. He beautiful. is doing that. And I must say, they must believe in him as well, the House of Balmain. The collection is so expensive. Yeah. I mean, just to make the samples, it was a very long show, right? And very how many, long. How many nooks there very in there. Long. And every single nook must have costed like thousands just yeah. to make the samples can you imagine going to production and mm. i think that jean luc is right that that authenticity is there because yeah. even though it's not it's not it's difficult because i think that fashion sort of snobs will be like oh you know we keep wanting to sort of say this isn't fashion but of course it it's an it's you know that these girls and these women very much exist mm. and i think he has a very very um, well, he has th th he's actually friends with these women. Yeah. It's not, it, and these women aren't just fashion people; they're shoppers. Yeah. So actually, it is very much about clothes that mm. women are just going to love wearing. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's it's important for them to 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 have someone next to them. It's a muse or yeah, friends no, totally, them. totally. And the irony is, like, people are very willing to cast like a Kendall Jenner in their shows, but when she's out and about, she often. She wears, she wears Balmain, them, she yeah. likes it, she's having a nice time. Like. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean, you can just see how much the people that are on the front row that, yes, are wearing head to toe Balmain, but they absolutely, like, they're fashion fans, they're Balmain yeah. fans, the, you know, the Balmain army, they're not just customers, they're fans, and if you mm. can have somebody be a fan of your label, not yeah. just a customer of any business, yeah. that's huge. Yeah. Another element, I think, that really came out from Paris Fashion Week this season was lots of customers at the shows yeah from yeah. Balmain to Chanel to Dior mm, yeah. I've never seen so many customers, customers and again yeah. you know especially at Chanel where you know there was like this huge um, um, uh, production where you could really see all these uh, people you know yeah. these ladies wearing it and yeah. buying it yeah, and you saw more yeah. than ever now houses and brands are literally uh, considering you know customers yeah. you know you, you are very dear to us and they want yeah. to keep but them it's the changing role of the fashion yeah. show isn't it because it, it doesn't make any sense to do these great amazing spectacles that you feel lucky to be invited to and then that a couple there with their son and they were like look mummy there you are at the show and it's just like yeah. but they were just customers yeah, yeah but obviously just they were lovely people and it really meant a lot to them yeah to be invited mm -hmm. what did we think of dior you mentioned it briefly there because obviously it's a big Big one at the moment, lots of conversation around Maria Grazia and what she's doing there. Blue. <laughs> yes. I, I really Everyone I, loved I, it, I, I see. No, I, thought it, I thought it was kind of nice. It's really sweet how she talks about the connection that she has with her daughter and therefore this kind of younger girl and like, yeah. what would my daughter wear? And like this, you know, denim factor and then a few of the Dior silhouettes just to keep it in mind and things like that. I and and. You know, I'm very charmed by what she's doing, and I think that some of the things are really great and really elegant, and I'd love to wear them myself. I, I'm just, I suppose, I'm just not completely taken by her, and maybe that's, I don't know why that is, and, and perhaps, you know, I don't know if she's um, fleshed out every shop in the way that she wants. Yeah. So I don't know that she has. Like, I, I, I can't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not feeling the soul completely even though i do think that she's very soulful i think she's quite interested in tarot and things like that and yeah. has this sort of like otherworldly she really gets into that type of thing and yet i'm just not getting it it's hard to project that soul when you're having to make collections that huge do you know what i mean like i think with valentino even there was a even though it was such mega brand you know they built those figures so much there's a certain intimacy to balance mm. it that I just don't think you can do in Dior no. in the same way because it's like this giant front, you know, it's just like huge in a way yeah. that Valentino 
could be much more I don't know though I think it's quiet. a canvas I mean she's got enough looks here I mean <sighs> kind of looks like Sort of I know, I want to go if you know now I can see a Dior look there, but maybe I'm wrong because you know I said oh, I want to I want to go to Dior and I want to see a bar jacket and maybe something a bit more mm -hmm. feminine. But would you ever go to Dior to buy a navy blue blazer or maybe an oversized denim jacket? I don't know. It's no. uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. The accessories were great, that's for sure. I think the problem. I mean, for fashion people now, when you think of buying tailoring. You, th you think of Celine or something like yeah. that, when actually, you know, uh, Ralph Simmons bar jackets, they were amazing. Mm. Like, I went and tried some of them more and they were beautiful. Wow. Just, but yeah. just so crazy expensive. Like, you know, I think that's another thing. It's like, if you do want to buy tailoring, there are just, there is like your Celines and what have you. But I think his engagement with the Dior archive probably go down in the history books as very case clever study way is it. the best yeah. ever. I don't know why the choice of navy i mean i remember the show notes says it's quite armani the with the beret yeah. the navy it was like an army <laughs> <laughs> you know but not my like like more feminine oh, version yeah. an army of uh, of navy ladies yeah. and you know i, I love the, the show notes that you know she she uh, mentioned a quote from um, monsieur christian dior says oh i chose a navy blue because it's the best that best um um fits with black yeah yeah that yeah it's, it's a great quote but then it's a very uh, old school do that kind of old fashion house thing to do as well, send out a whole collection in one colour. In one colour. I mean, obviously, yeah. Had yeah. Givenchy as well was red, but I feel like this had that, it sort of went back into the archives in that way we're talking about, but I don't think she has a choice because she's new at this house and she's got to put her new stamp on her own. Yeah. On Dior. And I feel but like yeah, it's definitely, it's very interesting seeing the partnership part ways. For example, mm. I think that uh, Pia Paolo did an extraordinary couture collection of Valentina yeah. and ready to wear also is beautiful I, I think he's flying I, yeah. I think she has a much tougher breed she has, more a, really commercial. Tough breed, she has yeah. a really tough yeah. breed and also I think the really difficult thing is Christian Dior himself was only there for 10 years so when you talk about like the Dior archive I think people imagine it like it's like you know decades upon decades of clothes and she's coming in after someone like Raph Simmons who so effectively used that archive, and then you've got John Galliano who used that archive. It's like there's not actually that many ideas in that mm. archive to draw. Well, they're, on. The, like, they're, they're probably the most important ideas in fashion history. I don't think he did plumb the whole lot. I mean, no, I don't think he plumbed the whole thing. But if you think the iconic silhouettes, you think new look. Um, you, yeah, you think of those bar jackets. You think of that knits in weight, and it's like once that's kind of done, you're kind, you're not gonna. It's not like the Balenciaga thing where you are gonna find these hidden jets. He, you know, Balenciaga moved, I think, with his silhouettes a lot more. But she could the, look at the time that like Eve was there. That, you know, she could yeah. move it on and then do a really funny look at how the time when you know the other people were designing for yeah. the house. And but then that's a taboo, isn't it? Referencing other designs. Like it is. It is. It is. It is. Some of it, it with is, those um, frock coats for Galliano, but yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, is there anyone we've missed? Um, we've gone through quite a lot. There's a few. I mean, you mentioned that you think well, we the weather was Chanel, lovely. But uh, you know, um, big rocket. <laughs> big rocket. Um, I think. Um, I think that uh, Paco Rabanne again was really, Paco really strong. Paco Rabanne was actually McQueen. Big, people seem oh, to like. Yeah, very loved much. it. I, 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 actually, loved McQueen is one of my favorite shows very of all season. So for yes, me, yeah. Yeah. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Why so did so you love it so from, much? Well, I love the references. Um, I loved it also because it was. Um, Sarah's second collection from McQueen that felt more Sarah than McQueen. So she's yeah. starting to, already from last season, she started to depart from again yeah. the, this legacy of making uh, McQueen for what McQueen yeah. was and just started to make it a bit lighter, a bit more feminine, a bit more research. You know, she's, mm. she's a good researcher. She's a very she's good like, researcher. And, yeah. and that felt more, fr I felt fresher. Mm -hmm. So the last two seasons, I mean, last season and this show, I think they were fantastic. I mean, I went mm. to see um, the day after uh, all the clothes mm. one by one and uh, the amount of uh, detailing and uh, uh, hand and, and uh, crocheting and mm. the lace and the 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 printing they're so and the knitwear mm. in particular so so mm. beautiful that i must say it's one of my favorite shows from very much so for me as well i think that just it was <coughs> they did this epic trip where they went down to the cornish coast and um just went on this sort of king arthur sort mm -hmm. of you know explorate but then they came across this sort of this clouty tree and it's um, the sound was amazing it was all these crashing rocks these tiny little bells mm. and 
the and it was just it was really evocative and mm. but there was the detailing like Jean Lucas said was phenomenal um, backstage Sarah Burton's eyes were just full of tears mm. she was just so emotional oh. and um, she showed me this dress where she'd written in old English Lee was born in this yeah, year that. And all yeah. that lovely it was just wonderful sort of um, referencing and storytelling and it felt it was about women working together as a community and them going down there and there was a lot of heart behind it mm, mm. yeah there was a lot of heart behind it yeah. it's mm. going to be a time of change next season obviously um new designer in it chloe because this was her white colors last mm. show and it's um oh, how do you say her name Nata is it natalie or natasha ramsey natasha. living mm. came from, ramsey, yeah. from beaton mm. who's brilliant so that'll be really exciting yes. for her in it chloe who do we think is going to get Givenchy? Ooh. I keep. I wonder if it's going to be Eddie. Ooh, interesting. I hadn't even thought of that. Because all those rumours that it was going to be Virgil, yeah. Abloh. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, uh, he do, he wouldn't be able to do couture. I, mean, I also just think he's having a lot. He's doing great stuff at Off White. Like, yeah, me too. You know, just keep going, do that. You mm -hmm. know. But yeah, I'm interested. To I have heard Parenza's a school of being put in the mix. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Parenza. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. I really think they should be in Paris by now. It's I a shame. They're not going to Paris anyway. Yeah, they are. They'll be there. But they'll, they'll be, be showing us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. But I, someone told me. It's so. a shame that Olivia. That's a good idea. They've got, they did a PS1 at age whatever, like they're, yeah. they, I'm always so bad I think they're brilliant, they're I just bag. think, keep going with their own, I love their own label, I just yeah. think it's I great. do too, I think it's phenomenal. It's a shame that Olivier um, Teskin's relaunched, because it's like, he would have been quite good. I know. Know. Mm, yeah. Yes, very good. Yeah, Perfect, with actually. the couture, maybe they'd need an accessories person to sort of beat some commerciality out of him, but yeah. So yes. all in all, a strong season, we had a nice time, we were impressed. Yeah. Yeah? You? Feeling optimistic about the state of fashion? <laughs> always say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you must. I'm always super optimistic, but yes. Good. Yes. Yeah. Every six months, so it's, it will be. It's okay. There will be something. So we'll be There'll be something good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Should we give all the designers a round of applause for giving us so much to talk yeah. about.